Welcome one and all, and God's blessings to you as we continue to celebrate Easter and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. We are celebrating Easter, all right, but there's no doubt we are celebrating it under the strangest of circumstances. Empty church buildings, virtual worship services, old guys like me doing their very best to become YouTube personalities. I mean, really? Come on. It's the coronavirus, of course. An illness we had not even heard of a handful of months ago. Well, that was then. But today, knowledge of this epidemic fills our every waking hour. The reality of this disease and how dangerous it actually is, honestly, it impacts our every decision. Every moment of every day seems dictated somehow by the fact that the coronavirus is out there and it's contagious and catching this disease would be life altering to say the very least. And by the way, I trust you are familiar with the symptoms and that you are in fact self-isolating and taking all the recommended steps to keep yourself and your loved ones well. And I pray, I really do, for your health and for your happiness. But for now, I would like to turn to the Bible and a rather lengthy story we find in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, going from verse 13 all the way to verse 35. It turns out that in this story, there's a different kind of outbreak on the loose. There's a different sort of contagion at work. It was infecting people back then and altering their lives completely. And for lack of a better name, I'm going to call the outbreak in Luke 24, Jesus Fever. Jesus Fever. And the story of Jesus Fever begins in Luke 24, on the evening of that very first Easter Sunday. Two disciples of Jesus were walking from the city of Jerusalem back to their homes in a little village called Emmaus. Emmaus, for the record, was about seven miles from Jerusalem, and these two men were on their way all right, but they were taking some very slow and very sad steps to get there. They were filled with grief and despair because their friend and teacher, this man called Jesus of Nazareth, had just been put to death. Now, when he was alive, the teachings of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the very presence of Jesus had filled them with hope. Maybe God has come to our rescue at last. But now Jesus had been crucified. It had happened on Friday, and they had seen it. They'd watched as Jesus died. And it was like all their hope had died with him. And as they sadly walked the road home, they were joined by a stranger who went with them along the way. The stranger listened patiently as these two disciples poured out the grief in their hearts. And then, then the stranger answered them, beginning with the Old Testament stories of Moses and moving on through the prophets. This stranger opened the whole Bible to them and explained how the Son of God, the Savior of the world, was to die on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins and how on the third day he was to rise again. He showed them how the Savior's death and resurrection had, in fact, been foretold by God in Scripture. And by the time he finished, 
they had reached Emmaus. The two disciples invited the stranger to join them for supper. The hour is late, they said. Please stay for the evening. Take your rest. So the stranger went in to eat with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. It is the Lord Jesus, they said. And he vanished from their sight. Their grief and despair now gone, filled with faith and joy instead, off these two disciples go, running this time, running all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the others, we have seen the Lord. He is risen from the dead. And from that moment on, faith in this Jesus Christ filled their every waking hour. Trust in Jesus, belief in Jesus. From this time on, it impacted every decision they made. Every moment of every day was now controlled. It was now somehow guided by the fact that Jesus was alive and well and walking beside them, showing them the way. And life would never be the same. Meeting the risen Lord Jesus was a life-altering event, to say the very least. And there's absolutely no doubt that these two disciples had caught it. Jesus' fever, that is. These two disciples had caught Jesus' fever. And you need to know that. What's more, when we look closely at the story in Luke's Gospel, it becomes obvious that Jesus' fever is kind of like the coronavirus, in that Jesus' fever also has some very clear, very unmistakable symptoms. And you ought to know those symptoms as well. For example, symptom number one, heartburn. Heartburn, I'm in verse 32 in the text, Whenever the word of God is proclaimed, our hearts burn within us. If your heart burns when you hear or read or study the word of God, careful. You might also be catching Jesus' fever. Symptom number two. Altered eyesight. Verse 31 in the text, altered eyesight. These disciples could see Jesus in the breaking of the bread. They could see Jesus at work in his church and at work in his world. They could see Jesus at work in their own lives. Now listen, if even in these troubled times, you can see the hand of God at work in your life, and in your family, and in your church, and even in your world, then, oh my goodness, you need to know it may be Jesus' fever. But there's more. Happy feet. Happy feet. These two disciples saw Jesus, then got up and ran all the way back to Jerusalem. They ran the seven miles back to where they were needed, and they got involved. They had happy feet and open hands. They worked on bended knee. They went to where they were needed and did the good that needed doing. Happy feet are a symptom of Jesus' fever. So are open hands and bended knees. And there's one more. One more symptom, maybe the scariest symptom of all for us as Lutherans. Open mouths. Verse 35, open mouths. These two disciples told the others what had happened. They talked and they talked a lot. 
about how Jesus had been made known to them and how they believed Jesus to be God's Son, our Savior. They opened their mouths and told other people. So, burning hearts, altered eyesight. Happy feet and open mouths. Wow! Luke 24, this was a serious case of Jesus' fever. And Jesus' fever is life-altering. I mean, if you think the coronavirus impacts life, what do you suppose knowing Jesus Christ can do? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. The one who died and rose again just to save you. He died on a cross to forgive you and free you from your past. And he rose again to open before you a new and loving way of life that begins now and simply never ends. Jesus changes how we see life. Jesus changes how we see death. Every moment of every day now belongs to him and is controlled by him. We are controlled by him. And filled with a new sense of hope, we are guided each day along paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God's children, now God's children forever. Catching Jesus' fever and becoming a Christian is the ultimate in life-altering events. Or at least, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the ultimate in life-altering events. Back to the coronavirus for a minute. Around the world right now, even as we speak, the search is on for a vaccine. Now, what's a vaccine? Well, a vaccine, of course, is a small, weakened form of the virus given to people in order to help them develop an immunity. The point is, if you get the vaccine, you never get the actual disease. Okay, so here's the problem with a great many people who call themselves Christian today. We've never really caught the disease. We've never really caught Jesus' fever, have we? As a matter of fact, far from catching Jesus' fever, it's as though many of us have been vaccinated against it. A table prayer here, a vacation Bible school there. Make it to worship at the holidays, take pictures of the children in the annual Christmas program. Oh, how cute they all are. Throw in the occasional wedding or funeral and that's pretty much it. A little bit of Jesus here and there. A vaccination. Never the real thing, never Jesus fever. Just a small, weakened form of faith to make sure you never actually get exposed to the real thing. Jesus fever, the real Jesus fever, always has specific symptoms. We see some here in Luke 24, including heartburn and happy feet, altered eyes and open mouths. Those are a few symptoms of Jesus' fever. Galatians chapter 5 is another place to look, the fruits of the Spirit. But the first and best place to look is in the mirror. Where are you in your walk with this Jesus Christ? Wherever you are, I know for a fact where he is. And that's walking right beside you, forgiving and teaching you to forgive. Loving and teaching you to love. Offering you a message of hope and inviting you to live in hope 
and in joyful obedience to his word today and forever. Now, there is nothing, and I mean nothing in my message today that you haven't heard before. Some of you a thousand times already. The question is not, have you heard of Jesus Christ who died and rose again? The question is, have you caught Jesus' fever? Or is a sermon like this one just another vaccination? A booster shot, if you will. May today be the day, not for a vaccination, not for another booster shot, but for the real deal, Jesus himself, come to rescue you and alter your life as well. It is the grace and mercy of God to forgive his people. It is the grace and mercy of God to change his people and save his people, but even more, it is the grace and mercy of God to save you. With the help of God, may you catch Jesus' fever, and may it be contagious, and may it lead you from death into life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.